Hello, YouTube. Uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today because uh, I have been with a friend of mine, a new friend of mine, uh, and if you've been watching this channel, uh, you've noticed that I've given him a shout out a few times in the last few episodes because he actually contributed the camera that I'm currently doing this on. His name is Matt. Hi, Matt. And uh, so uh, we have been playing the Munchkin CCG over Skype the last uh, couple of weeks or so and just trying to iron out the details in trying to play over long distance because sometimes you don't have local players and so we wanted to make it more accessible to find more players wherever they might be and be able to play uh, like whenever you have time, somebody else has time, no matter where that might be. So uh, I just wanted to go through basically a bit of a tutorial on how we play, uh, what the uh, difficulties might be regarding uh, having the long distance playing over a computer and uh, the uh, how we overcome those slight difficulties. It's not really that hard, so if you have uh, a camera, like a, a webcam such as this one, um, a Skype account, and uh, a computer connected to the internet, and a CCG deck, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, you, The only other thing that you need is um, something to uh, signify things that have been placed on your uh, hero card. Uh, bleed effects such as that. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So. Uh, I'm going to, but the first thing that you would do, like when you call the other person, you would call them as much as I'm talking to you right now, and you go, you know, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Let's play the game. I'm going to play, say, a wizard deck. And you say, all right. And then you would then point your camera at your play area. This will be my play area here. This is my play mat that I got from Ink Gaming. I've mentioned it several times. We're not having an earthquake. I'm just trying to position the darn thing. There we go. And I just have it on a standard rig. Everything's available on Amazon. I know because that's how Matt sent it to me. So, uh, you get your... You have, I'm using my Munchkin play mat because it has all the zones on it. And then I'll show you, like, the one augmentation that we've made to it um, just for the uh, ease of use. But, as you can see, all of this is available on the uh, munchkinccg.game website. Uh, the template for this, and then I just went to Ink Gaming. You give them the file, and they'll send you a uh, a playmat, just a regular like uh, rubber backed playmat uh, of it. It's like twenty four bucks. It's not bad, and it's well worth it to have this uh, this playmat because it has like the purse where your gold, uh, the runaway token, level counter, deck discards, your horde, your stash, your DMZ, dangerous monster zone. It has this little uh, open area up here, which personally I use to put my location. Like it's just a little dead zone, and I tend to put a location up here. Why not? Uh, and then, just for uh, these games, I have, this is uh, obviously a rough prototype thing, but I have something called I, I call the opponent zone. So I just put it up here to signify cards that are currently stuck to your opponent somehow, and then he will have some sort of token that will signify the different kinds of cards that he has attached to his hero or cards. Uh, for the various effects that go on those, the one, the idea that we had that I had, well, that we had were something that was easily accessible 
and that most gamers would have in their possession uh, pretty much immediately upon learning of this ability, and that was poker chips. Any gamer worth his salt probably has some laying around. Even if you don't play poker, you probably have an old set of poker chips laying around. So that's the easiest, most accessible thing to have around. All you have to do is figure out with the other player which chips, which color chips represent what. So, like, if I were playing this wizard here, and I were to play uh, the hot potato into my horde here, and then I zap that hot potato, it now goes to my opponent's horde. So, I'm going to put this zapped hot potato here in my opponent's zone, and then that opponent would have, say, a, uh, a black poker chip here. And uh, he would put that in his, in his horde to say, oh man, I have, I have a black poker chip here. That means that I'm going to have to take a damage at my cooldown, because that means that's a hot potato. If you're really industrious, then uh, I had an idea that I just take, like, I go to my printer, I get a piece of uh, label paper, I uh, go to the copier, and I copy, like, the picture of the potato, and just make a sticker that looks like a potato and put it on the chip. That'd be fun, too. If you're not into arts and crafts, just go with the regular potato, uh, with the regular poker chip. So you would have this this poker chip signifying, yeah, that's a that's a thing. You might draw a line on it, zapped, unzapped, whatever. Uh, that's usually uh, specific to uh, the hot potato because it it's something that gets zapped or unzapped. But like mine specifically have like uh, dice. Uh, pips on them, so, like, one, six, you know, whatever, so, like, if one is on top, it's unzapped, so if it's five on top, then it's zapped, whatever. Just, you know, figure that out with the other person as you're playing, before you play, so, if you have a hot potato, and anyone who's seen this deck before knows that the combo that this deck is built around is not just the hot potato, but putting the Curse of Quack on that hot potato, so, you would go again go to the opponent zone you would take the curse of quack put it on that hot potato and now that potato cannot unzap so I would then take this blue curse of quack here and put it somewhere on the potato to go oh now it signifies it can't unzap until I use my squishing ring to get, it, get rid of that curse or whatever so this would be like a not unzapping curse. Like you don't even have to have it specific to the curse of quack. So you can have one color representing a specific action that it performs, like causing something not being able to unzap. Because it also can go for the hold that pose, which if you have say a used card dealer and someone puts a hold that pose on it, you don't get to unstash that uh, that card. So if it stays in play, then if there's if the other person has the hold that pose in their opponent zone, then you just put a a chip on there. They go, oh yeah, I don't get to unstash that. Or you know this would be unzap, so maybe green means unstash. So I don't get to unstash that. So they, you know, you just figure that out beforehand, and you have you have those going on. So with that, you pick out colors. Uh, most decks, or most uh, uh, packages of poker chips come with several colors. So just work those out beforehand. Have them around. Um, if you're industrious and you need more colors than that, spray paint them. You know. And then, for things like uh, the human, the uh, the bard, the orc bard here. So I'm going to play a bard deck. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to play this bard deck. Uh, I'm going to play a final countdown on you, which means every time that you draw a card, you take a damage. So for for my chips here, then you would put say a blue chip on your on your hero. 
it says, oh yeah, every time I draw, I have to take a damage. And then uh, I put a trombone on there as well. When you take a take a green one, you go, oh yeah, every time I zap my hero, I have to take a damage. It all depends on where it is. And then, uh, of course, bleed it out is bleeding. And uh, if you don't use red for bleeding, you're doing it wrong, in my humble opinion. So, you know, uh, the, the game that Matt and I played uh, yesterday and today, uh, he had like four bleed effects on me, and I had like four on him uh, in separate bleed decks that we were playing uh, earlier yesterday and today. So, that was fun. <laughs> Well, more fun for him than me yesterday, and more fun for me than him today. So, and then if you get like uh, stuff shaming, uh, which you know uh, clerics will shame your stuff. So you have your scepter of Schadenfreude out here, which would be ironic. And they uh, they go, oh, I'm going to put stuff shaming on your scepter there, and they would put the 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 stuff shaming card in their opponent's zone and you would put the bleed on your card you go oh whenever I zap this I have to take a or you know I as long as I have this I have to take bleed damage on my reckoning phase I might be over explaining this sorry I'm not talking down to you I swear but uh, I mean if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them in the comments um, but like uh, you can have temporary ones, obviously. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, say, things that put a minus one power on uh, on an opponent's weapon, then uh, I just took like the uh, uh, the label thing, and I took the power symbol, and I put a minus in front of the one. You put that on whatever the uh, weapon is. Nah, I don't have a weapon, not handy. Is it hairspray? Here we go, glass gong, here we go. And say, oh, but it, that glass gong has a minus one. You put it over here, near this, uh, near the power, you go, oh, two minus one, now it's a one, one, one gong. And now it's going to do that, so uh, that, that's easy to keep track of as well. With just a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of arts and crafts, then uh, you can make this completely viable for playing over Skype. And uh, I've known several people on the Zapped and Squished group, which I'm definitely going to post this to them. So, hi, Zapped and Squished group, and uh, that have either been trying to uh, play this over Skype or been trying to figure out a way to play it over Skype uh, something like that. Whoa, big head. There I go. I'll lean back. Um, have been trying to figure out a way to play it over Skype or uh, have been trying to or whatever. But this seems to be the best way that we've found uh, just to have the opponent zone, which is basically just a new zone uh, on the uh, of the zones that they've laid out in the uh, rules and otherwise it plays just like it would if, they, if the other person were here. I have my laptop set up in the same place where Corey would sit during a regular game uh, and I have uh, my, my camera staring right at me. I can see the screen as if uh, the other person were sitting right there and over Skype takes up the whole screen ta-da, you're good. Uh, if you really want it life-size, go get your TV, put it on the other side of the screen, on the other side of the table. <laughs> so, uh, if you have any questions, improvements, criticisms, I always take constructive criticism. Um, I've never gotten into a flame war on my channel with anybody. Uh, I'll, you know, I've always had just, like, fans which is interesting. I, like the five or six fans that I've had of this channel. <laughs> Hi to all five or six of you. And me. Hi, me. 
yes, I watch these too. Not only do I watch the episodes, I watch the uh, little interstitials where I just talk to the camera too. But uh, tell me what you think. Um, give me input. Uh, just say hi. But in the meantime, be sure to like, share, favorite, subscribe, pay it forward, send us money, be excellent to each other, and we'll see you next time.